We'd like to welcome you to tonight's episode from Field to Plate with Larry. As you can see, we're on Cave Run Lake with Tim Mays and his son Braden. It's a beautiful fall evening, and we've been looking forward to filming this episode of Fall Crappie Fishing for quite a long time. Um, later on, at, towards the end of the show, you actually see in us frying up the um, crappie, the hush puppies and everything. So please stay tuned and thank you guys for tuning in tonight and watching this episode. Welcome back to Field Field to Plate with um, Larry Lewis. I guess Tim Mays now. Me and Tim did some really nice crappie fishing, and we're here back at the house, and we're going to start cooking it this evening and having a little fish fry. We're going to go through steps of this, um, the process of actually fry, frying the fish, and what you see here, um, people use different methods. Um, some uses a gas burner, you use a gas uh, burner. Yeah, I usually deep fry mine yep. with, the, with the outdoor gas burning. Um, a lot of times I use just a simple electric skillet, set uh, temperature on 350, put about an inch of oil in it. Um, it works for me in frying fish and deer meat and stuff. Um, Tim, show them the bowl fish we have, that we caught. <laughs> yeah, we got it right here. Uh, what I'll do, you ready to start frying some yeah, now, Larry? Yeah, some. Well, these, uh, the bigger crappie and the bigger pieces, uh, I like to chunk them up a little bit. So I usually cut them up in about four pieces generally. And uh, throw them in the batter. We don't have such big pieces. I don't know who I was eating. Now my kids, they don't like the, the whole filet, so or my wife either. And it fries a lot. It, fr it fries you know, a lot quicker. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And while he's doing that, um, I'm actually going to reach over and reach over and get a yep. bag of fish fry. You can use any brand. Um, we ain't promoting a brand, obviously, but this is a Louisiana fish fry products. Um, this is New Orleans style fish fry, seafood breading mix. Zatarans makes a really good um, makes a really good brand, and um, it's simple to do. Um, we're not battering the fish beforehand. It has a little bit of moisture from it sitting in the water. Um, I kind of like cheat, I guess. I don't like keeping my hands dirty battering or frying, whatever. But this is just called a batter pro. And um, 
we actually open the fry mix up. Not be childproof. Need a knife. Got it. All right. Um, pour a whole bag in. It'll hold it. Um, this is called your batter screen. This is a system that's in between your um, dry batter on the bottom and your batter box right on top. Um, our oil is almost where we want it to be. Um, I didn't mention that earlier, but we want the oil to be on 350, 375, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, if you can see where Tim has cut some fish up, we're about ready to start frying. When we come back from this break, we'll actually start frying the fish and getting it in the oil and, and go with it. Welcome back, we're getting ready to fry fish. We got a visitor to come in between, in between getting ready. Braden, which caught most of the fish while we was on the last trip, which you'll see on, on film, that he did a really, really good job at that. He's here today joining us in on frying it. And welcome Braden, Braden's Tim's son those that don't know and I'm quite a fisherman outdoorsman and you like it don't you yeah you like deer hunting fishing you like it all hunting fishing and baseball that's his thing so he uh i really started i was always a bass fisherman and uh i can probably say that him and just the family in general got me more into crappie fishing because crappie fishing is a lot more fun for kids and, and the family than going out there and casting over and over and over trying to catch bass and uh, you benefit from even it's just like this too, you get to eat it. We all love to eat fish and it's just a lot of fun all the way around, so. And the nice thing about it is bringing youth, in, youth into the outdoors. You know, Tim, Braden's not only Tim's son, but you know, bring, bring your family, kids in the outdoors, learning them the ways of crappie fishing, cooking, and that way when they, when they grow up, they can hunt fish. You can eat, can't you? You don't have to depend on someone to cook for you, will you? That's right. And so we always tell, my wife that uh, we went grocery shopping every time we go crappie fishing so we're back from the grocery store so we're getting ready to fry up some food <laughs> Braden helped some while we was on break um i'm going to take this off and give you all a close-up kind of what it looks like um some of this is battered and ready to go um we'll give it another quick shake before we start frying and we'll fry up um a couple um servings here of um crappie and show y'all how we do it and the process of it and um, get going. You ready to do some more shaking? It yeah. says shaking and baking. We're shaking and frying. We're shaking and frying. There you go. You make a little mess because the batter's always going to come out. And that's what towels and sweepers are for. Wherever you're outdoor, you don't have to worry about it. That's the process of it. You just shake it and it lets the lets the meal go back and forth or fish fry, whatever you're doing, and it coats it. And, then when you turn it turn it back up like that, um, up like this, it lets all the dry go back down. And you can sit down there, Braden, if you want to. Get back on this. And we'll uh, take the lid off. And you got several pieces ready to fry. I just use sit, simple tongs. And um, I always put the fish in away from you so it don't um, splash you with oil. Tim's still cutting up a bunch. We have a bunch of fish to fry, a bunch of hush puppies to cook, and we're also going to make some homemade potato wedges out of all this. You can probably put um, probably 15 chunks or so in this size deep fryer at a time. Um, I like using electric deep fryer because I can control the temperature the whole time. You're not always adjusting and um, trying to keep it to tent, but if you are frying for a lot of people, sometimes it's easier to have a bigger deep fryer here because you can fry more. So we'll put several pieces in here. Midway through, sometimes you want to take, um, I use a slotted spatula, I got this, and you just want to kindly work that part, 
you don't with dry batter you don't have to worry about it sticking together as wet batter sometimes you put too many pieces in it'll kind of like stick together and and fry together you got one big chunk of fish where the dry batter like that it hardly doesn't do it as bad um, we can actually fit several more pieces in here you want it to where your fish can float around decent inside the oil and it fries good you don't want to overcrowd it or it won't it won't fry really good And I kind of just keep working it around a little bit while it's frying. Probably enough for this. We'll put that back on there. Maybe you could see a close up of this, you can see it don't it really don't take long for it to fry. And them chunks like that, what do you say to him? It probably takes I don't leave mine in, but just a couple minutes really, whenever I drop them in the deep fryer on these smaller pieces. Uh, of course three hundred and fifty degrees is a magical temperature uh, when frying fish, but you try to keep there another another hint and tip when you take um your oil uh, kind of cool down a little bit when you start putting fish in. So when I start, I kind of get my oil to 375, and um, then I'll adjust it back down because you'll have a little bit of variance there to drop the temperature and kind of keep it steady at 350. And whenever this fish cooks, I take it out, I'll leave it for a minute so my oil gets back up to temp before I put any more in it. It's looking good. The um, as you'll see, we was on a it was a nice day fishing that day, wasn't it? It was nice. Weather was good, good fall. Um, me and uh, me and Tim talked some while we was fishing in Braden. But what would you suggest the best time a crappie fish is? What What's your favorite time of year to go? Everyone really is different. Uh, there's a lot of people that fish. They really like it in the spring or right now. And uh, myself, I fish, and I do better myself right, right through summer, uh, right through the middle of summer, just the way I fish down there. Uh, the places we were fishing is, I mean, there's deep structure under us. We're fishing anywhere from 15 to 18 foot deep. And uh, just structures they've put in the lake. and that's when I do my best. That's when I prefer to fish. Uh, a lot of people, uh, like I said, just prefer it in the spring when the fish are shallower. Uh, but I do better catching them when they're deep on the, on the deep structure. You can see I'm starting to take some of this out and it's done. Um, we're going to keep frying. We're going to fry a mess of fish. Up, be ready to come back, and then whenever we come back, we'll be doing some potato wedges and hush puppies. And that'll pretty much finish our meal. That's my favorite thing to eat is homemade potato wedges, hush puppies, homemade, and some good crappie. So, um, you pretty much when it's floating and it's getting that golden color, you don't want to over fry it um, and you know, kind of burn it or crisp it up. I don't guess you, it's really burn it, but it dries out and it kind of gets hard and, and you don't want to, crappie's a real good delicate fish and you want to try to get it just right when you're frying it. So um, whenever we come back, we'll start the potato wedges and hush puppies and we'll be ready to plate it up before long. Our community is full of neighbors helping neighbors. It's what we do. And from the beginning, Mountain Telephone committed to making our community a better place. Why? We are your neighbors and we want to help. We're there to lend a hand in good times. And when tragedy strikes, we help rebuild. We're more than reliable telephone service and blazing fast internet. We're your neighbors. Call Mountain today. We're here to help. Now it's time to fry up some potato wedges and hush puppies. Nothing's better with crappie 
other than I like potato wedges and um, hush puppies. I just um, I make homemade potato wedges. I just take a potato, cut them in little spears. Um, I soak them in water overnight, or at least if you can't do it overnight, soak it for two or three hours. It lets uh, starches get out of potatoes and they fry better. Um, I don't know if you can zoom in, but I just use a little rubber made container, put um, put them in water, and it lets it pulls the starch out of the potatoes and they fry good. Hush puppy simple. I use um, I use two cups of um, cornmeal and about a cup of flour, um, about a half a cup or third between a third and half a cup, whatever you want of um, onions. Just chop up onions. And this batch, I added a little bit of cheddar cheese to it. And um, something different. You can put green onions, peppers in it. I mean, just whatever you want, Tim, any certain way you like them or you like doing them. Nope, I just uh, like eating them. I just like eating them. Um, the funny thing was, we heard a squirrel back here cutting on there in a tree, and we was going to see if uh, maybe we should go and grab a gun. And, cameras and get some of that film action but we better cook we'll do we'll leave that for another show um hush puppies all still around 350 375 if you notice i got a, a cup of water it's just in the measuring cup um i got a tablespoon what the water you can do it two ways you can either dip a little bit out like this and nothing fancy i don't try to shape them in my hand or nothing like that um I mean, if you want them fancy, you can shake them around a little bit with a spoon. And I just drop it in oil and let them start frying. Um, you can either take your spoon back in oil like that and get another one out. And um, what this does, it keeps, them, it keeps them from sticking to your spoon. Or you can use water and do the same thing. It's, there ain't no, um, I mean, no, no certain way to do it. Just trying to keep the batter from sticking to your spoon. Um, and you just dip them out and not do a few at a time. You really don't take um, don't take too long for a hush puppies to fry. Sometimes another thing I'll do, um, I use a Zatarans or a, a Cajun seasoning. And um, when the fish comes out of uh, oil or potato wedges, I'll sprinkle a little bit on it for some extra flavor. Um, depends on if you, if you like Cajun seasoning or whatever. Braden, what's your um, favorite thing to eat with fish? Probably hash puppies. Hash puppies. You want to try it? Yeah. Here, dip one out. And it's always about what, you know, you want to teach your brain here example. Um, teach them how to do this. I mean, kids never too young to cook and learn how if it's just mixing stuff or, go ahead and make some more. Or putting deep fryer, getting stuff out. <clears throat> I mean, you know, just get them involved. Get them out there and get them cooking. And teach them how to do this kind of stuff. Cooking and frying and fishing and hunting. You know, get them outdoors, get them involved. You can keep putting them in there. As he's putting them in there, I'm just going to turn them a little bit. And what you're doing, you're just wanting to get them a good golden brown all the way around it. Doing a good job. Yep, you're in charge of hush puppies from now on at the house. Yep. And there are a lot of really good recipes for hush puppies. This is just one I had in my cookbook. And, and I'm all the time doing stuff to it. Sometimes I'll throw jalapenos in it. and Sometimes I'll put cheese in it. Sometimes I'll just make them plain. I don't know. Seems like I'm always experimenting. Put us one more in there and we'll let these fry up. We got about a dozen in here and we're going to let them fry up and um, when we let these fry up we'll come back and we'll cook some potato wedges and then we'll, and then we'll plate it up. 
So we almost got our um, potatoes. They're um, they're getting ready to take off. Um, our hush puppies is done. Let me. Um, they turned out nice, golden brown. That's what you're looking for. Start floating, letting them get golden brown all the way around. If you can um, zoom in here and look at the plate, um, different methods. You can also use just a baking sheet and put a um, put a screen or a cooling rack over top of it. Do the same thing. This is actually just, I think it's called an airless, no, I don't know what the name, fryer or something like that that you put in the oven. But I use it to drain oil off of because it has a tray to catch the oil and it sets about an inch off of it. So while you're frying fish, you can put it in there and it lets all the oil drain off of it and it don't, um, don't let it get soggy. Because if you fry a lot and you leave it set in paper towels or napkins, it gets oily and soggy. And, and that kind of eliminates that. Um, simple. My fine china. When I eat outside, we use. Well, I ain't gonna lie. When we eat inside, we use it a lot too. <laughs> but um, it ain't the plate that makes us the food that counts. Um, well, some Braden's hush puppies he fried up. We'll throw a couple of them on here. Um, we'll get some this good old fried crappie. We don't have um, coleslaw or baked beans, but it's really it's good sides too to cook with this. Um, a lot of people can make some really good um, homemade coleslaw and some baked beans. So we get a pretty good serving of crappie there. That don't come out, so that's you know that ready. Give it a <laughs> Um, the potato wedges are done. Usually put six, seven of those on a plate. Um, one of my favorite things to sprinkle on the potato wedges when they get done is some Creole seasoning. Get it Kroger's Low or Kroger's Walmart or um, IGA different places has it. Um, it really does better when it's oils hot. It kind of soaks in it better. I'll even put a little bit on my crappie and everything but um you think you can eat this yeah. not hardly enough is it we um we thank you guys for tuning in if you want to it's simple throw you some tartar sauce ketchup on it and you're good to go but um we thank you guys for tuning in this evening um this is a wrap up of our crappie fishing trip that we went on we had a great time by the way I'd like to thank mm -hmm. tim for taking me out on that we're going to have more shows coming up. Tim was talking about, what was you talking about earlier? Now, rabbit do, season's coming up. We may need to go out rabbit hunting or something. Do, so. do some rabbit hunting. Might be able to sneak in a deer hunt, let Braden kill a deer. Might be able to get it on film. Um, we'll be going to Kansas day after Thanksgiving. We're going to try to get some bird hunting out there on it. So bear with us. Stay tuned. The next show coming up, stay tuned. You may like it. It's going to be a old-fashioned hog killing and hog roast um, so stay tuned we thank you all for um, joining us on our shows being part of it and supporting us that way we want to thank MTTV for um, everything they do for us um, camera crews the show the station their help everything they do um, we couldn't do this show without them so we're thankful for that and recipes will be on the website before long. Next few days or a day or so after this airs, you can look at it and find them. Um, we thank you guys and can't wait till the next show and y'all join us again. Band. Alright, you reckon the butter could die? Uh...